what is the dating world like and how have you seen it change and morph throughout your time on the planet? Oh my God. It's tough out there, man. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's really, I really thought that when I got into my fifties, dating was going to be easier. Mm -hmm. I really did. And it's not. Mm -hmm. There's a phenomena that I didn't experience in LA that I'm experiencing in Florida. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I call it the lean back. Okay. Even at a restaurant, the guys, I hope my chair reclines far enough. Like the guys are so freaking lean back. I'm like, am I just supposed to jump on your dick? Like, like you, like if they're too relaxed. <laughs> like lean in man <laughs> so, so do you think that's a relaxation thing do you think it's a fear thing do you think it's like more an east coast like social etiquette thing it's not working whatever it is <laughs> wherever it's coming <laughs> from i'm like i'm like you're not on a beach chair you're at a restaurant so that's like my little florida event because i think people like I was in California for about 25 years and I only, this wasn't on purpose, but I only ever went out with guys that were connected as Hollywood in some way. Okay. Even if they were a professional chef, like, you know, it, they were, they were working for the stars. Like there was always some connection. And I think to be there and to be, and to compete in that creative environment, you gotta be like a game, a game, a game. So yeah. I'm, I'm used to A game for 25 years and now I'm getting B game, like the beach chair game. So it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely different on the East coast versus the West coast. Yeah. I hear that. I feel like one thing that I've noticed is it seems like men have gotten less courageous, less willing to face rejection in terms of making a move, asking me out, letting me know they're interested. I feel like, and like in my, you know, the story I've made up is that that's because of online dating and waiting to get like a like or a match to have that signal. So that muscle has become atrophied. Is that, have, have you experienced that? I agree which is why when someone does approach me in person, even if I'm not interested, I'm so kind mm. and I encourage them and I appreciate, I, I am like, I really appreciate you like approaching me and you know, I'm either not available or I'm not, there's something here I'm not feeling but I encourage, like, I'm like, please keep approaching women in person. <laughs> like, I'm really nice about it. I'm like, and I'm like, keep going, man. Because you, you had like the courage, good for you. You had the courage to do it in person. I love that. Do you think that's an Aquarian thing? Because I have that too. Like when I see a single person demonstrating a behavior quality that I think is awesome or will help humanity, I'm, I'm like their cheerleader. You know, like keep doing that thing. Yeah, me. I mean, maybe I don't know. I have so many friends in astrology, and it's like I don't even need to know it because I'm fed it every day. So right, right. Yeah, I feel like that's a California thing because people are always like, "Oh, you've studied astrology," and I'm like, "No, it's just like the you know the air that I breathe." Being yeah, born and raised in LA. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's challenging. Online dating is really challenging because right. So as a woman, like there is that auditory component and we're not getting any of that on online dating. We're getting right. just like the visual. And so I'm going off the visual and I'm seeing, you know, what's appealing to my eyes. Now I've adjusted my vision to be appropriate with my age group, mm -hmm. you know, I think, I don't know if men What do is that. your range? What is your age range? I have on there 40 to 60 and I'm, um, I mean, I don't care if people know my age, like I'm 53. So I feel like that's reasonable. Totally.
Yeah. Yeah. And is there like, do you see certain, do you make connections with people of a certain age better than others? Mm, right around 50. I would mm -hmm. say I, I right around my natural age, I connect better with. Mm -hmm. I just think and there's more commonality. Yeah, of course. And I think Gen X is really specific in our unique experience of, I mean, everything, we're Pluto and Libra, we, you know, we're familiar with the internet, but we grew up without it. There, I think there's just kind of a uniqueness to our generation. Yeah, we, I, I totally, I didn't have my first computer until I was 27. Mm. And, you know, I, in my early 20s or in the, my 20s, I drove across the United States three times by myself in a little two-seater car with my two cats. I don't think I, I didn't have a cell phone and I didn't have GPS. I had a map. Yeah. And I figured it out, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, like, it's a very different time to be alive. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. I remember in my twenties, I like, you know, bought a one-way ticket to India with a backpack and a couple pairs of underwear and just figured it out. And I had a friend who's in his twenties and he went to Thailand and he was like texting me from Thailand and telling me that he was on Grindr in Thailand. And I was like, wow, that is just such a different experience. Than Probably had my... his Airbnb all picked out. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah, I mean, when I was on the road, I was gone. There was no way to get, I wasn't in touch with anyone. Like I was just meditating to California. Yeah, it was so different to take those big trips back yeah. then because we really only had ourselves, uh, you know, and our grit <laughs> to, to rely on. Yeah, and you know, being aware and street, you know, you kind of got to be street smart about things and it's not like yeah. you're looking at reviews. Yeah. So you, you figure things out. Yeah. So I'm curious to know, because um, I know from your perspective, Me Too is a great thing. Do you do you think it emerged organically? Are you seeing any downsides to that movement and how it's shifted our culture? I don't think, no, I don't think there's any downside to women not being manhandled and raped mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i can't see any if if that if that has led to some com confusion about permissions between the genders that's a very small price to pay for the light that's been shed on how women have been treated mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i feel that and what's your take on like a woman taking a meeting with someone in a hotel room at midnight like is there any is there any onus on her for for putting herself in that situation? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's not normal business hours. And that's right. not, you know, I mean, down in the lobby maybe, like, but midnight in a hotel room um, probably is not gonna lead to anything good. Yeah, for sure. Um, Ironically, you know, I've I met the person that you're referring to, the man, Mm -hmm. And he actually tried to manipulate me and it didn't work. So there we go. Why didn't it work? I trusted in my own power and talent. And then ironically, I ended up and I ended up having a meeting at his production company because my manager set it up. Hmm. Through my that. own, through my own power and talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just trusting that, I guess. Yeah. Like, no, I'm good. Yeah, this is something that I saw, you know, having grown up in LA. So, you know, I was obviously there for a while and like, I did see it shift, you know, in terms of shirts getting shorter, tops getting skimpier. And from my perspective, thinking like, that's not super safe like it's all I think it's all on the table you know and there are definitely times where I would dress skimpy less so anymore but it was yeah. always me having my own back and like okay if I'm going to a party like in Crenshaw by myself I'm not going to dress like that because that's not 
can be safe. And so there's one part of, you know, one thing that I'm seeing about this situation is that not, seeing women not necessarily have their own backs or have that street smarts to know, like if someone's inviting me to their hotel room at 12 o'clock, that's a no. Or if someone's inviting me into their house after a date, if I'm not willing to get naked, then that's also a no. You know, just like seeing where women can take more responsibility so that we are okay. having our own backs. So I've developed a character within myself <laughs> that I call my 1950s father. Okay. So like, you know how, <laughs> like, and maybe this goes back, I'm probably, I'm sure this goes back way older in time, but I'm like, huh, I gotta put my 1950s dad hat on, you know? Because there would be accountability. Typically, people were still, you know, the the woman, the wife, and the father were in the home. Um, the 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 boy or the guy would have to go to the door. Oh, I'm here to take Jennifer out. The father would size him up. You know, maybe what are your intentions with my daughter? You better have her home by ten. Yeah. So when you say self responsibility, I've really like developed this kind of. It's almost like a character that I have like fun with and I'm like hmm I don't know what would my 1950s father say right now and so you you do have to um ultimately you have to protect yourself yes yeah. exactly. if you didn't have that kind of father um which I didn't really have that kind of father and still don't it's like a quality that I had to it's a self-protective mechanism that I had to develop yeah for, and good for you for developing that self-protective me mechanism. You know, I see it from all angles. And, you know, for me, I'm always looking at like, where can I, as a woman, take responsibility? And I think that's something that would be wonderful to start teaching to like junior high school girls is saying mm -hmm. no and, and being really aware of how men, when they see a hot woman, they're not like us where they're like, oh, he's my soulmate and we're gonna buy a house together. And <laughs> they're like, I wanna penetrate that yeah and, and i think let's go in there <laughs> right and i think that women or girls especially